Hello, hackers. Happy weekend. We are going to roll into it with a test of something that I got a while ago and did a feature on the Adafruit supplied uh, miniware MH3 <laughs> MHP30 mini hot plate preheater. This is extremely exciting. Oh, I haven't even peeled off the uh, the plastic on it yet. Uh, there's some really interesting stuff about this, but I'm going to be using it to put together uh, with surface mount soldering this guitar pick PCB that I made for Avnet's 100 year anniversary last year. So let's see what happens. Oh, you know what? I might have the, uh, do I have the manual around. Yes, I do. Great. So let's get down to it. We've got our desktop set up um, with some fresh chip quick solder paste. We've got the MHP30. We've got some tweezers and we've got our PCB just quick before we get started. Let's take a look at what we've got here. So here's the product link. Um, this is the one on Adafruit. They seem to be out of stock right now, but you can get the same thing in various different places. It's from a company called Miniware and it is adorable. And they make lots of other cool stuff too. It's just so small. Uh, <laughs> and you can see my unboxing for it at the link below in the description. I hadn't actually put anything together, but you can see um, in the corner there on the right side, there's an Oshui board, which I think I will put together next with this, if this works out well. Uh, also, um, so here is the guitar pick PCB. I've just ordered a new version of this. So there's a couple things going on here, which is that the edges may have some little mouse bites left on them, except that I think this one I actually did already Dremel. Good job, me. So check it out. Uh, this is a wearable guitar pick PCB that uh, actually does work as a guitar pick. If you watch that uh, video, it's uh, the video for this project. It is a functional guitar pick and you can play guitar with it and you can see me. I think I might be playing a mandolin on there actually, but uh, it gets put together with SMD soldering. I did it by hand in previous videos and this just takes a few components, which makes it an ideal first round. So we've got this. Uh, switch, we've got a resistor, we've got an LED, and we've got a battery holder. That's all. And then it's a CR1225 battery that it's going to take. Uh, then we have this chip quick. And I've never actually opened a new syringe of chip quick before, which makes this very exciting. And there's some stuff that I didn't realize. Like, for example, you have to put together this little rubber stop thingy on the plunger when you're putting it together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It says stop, read instructions on reverse. This piece is only for manual dispensing and it gives you information about how to put it together, which is very nice. Uh, also on the back here, there's some information about the solder paste and um, you know how to solder surface mount devices and also recommended reflow profiles if you're using um, machines. Interesting. Oren says, I wonder if it could be pulled off also with an Ender 3 heated bed. I don't know how hot that gets. I think that would be the, the question is like, can it get hot enough to melt solder? And, uh, you know, that's, that's a good question. So um, let's take a look at the product pages for these as well. Uh, we've got, these are the tweezers that I'm using. They're on Newark. I'll put the link in the description as well. And these are, this is the solder paste that I'm using also from Newark. It's chip quick, water washable, 217 Celsius. So that's my guess is that, uh, let's see, does it say? Yeah, that's the melting temperature. So if, you're, if your Ender hot bed, heated bed can get up to 217 degrees Celsius, then you can probably uh, use that to melt solder. But I would be a little surprised because usually when I'm doing like uh, doing 3D printing, I think it's usually around 50 to 60. Um, and that's a lot to ask, but maybe the Ender is super badass and can do that. Uh, yeah, Lionel seems to agree. <laughs> Troll image, don't, it's not a hair on your screen. It's just Lionel's profile picture. <sighs> anyway. So that is the solder paste I'm using. That's the tweezers I'm using. I really love them. They've got a nice sharp tip and a little curved profile there. Um, we've got this guitar pick. I've, as I mentioned, I've just uh, updated it on Osh Park and I'm going to put the new link in here. So I'm gonna do that really quick as well, just to show you how that works. 
Um, I've turned on sharing for this, which is one of the options. And I'm going to hit this permalink button, bring up the new tab, and I'm going to dump it into the tutorial on Hexter. Because this is Hexter's channel. Let's see. Here's where to order the pick. So let's remove this. Sorry for the background typing noises. This is a shared office. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to save that. It, uh, it does auto save, but you can also hit Command S or Control S to auto save, to, to manually save. And then uh, that'll take you right there. Here's a new version. OK. And then there's also another one that I recently updated, which is the Companion Core Robot Heart. There's a new version of this that I just want to tell you about because I'm very excited. Uh, and it looks like this. Instead of the old version, where it's very compact and pretty, the new version is a little bit less compact and pretty, but it still will do some, it'll do some like cool new stuff. There's some M3 mounting holes, thanks to my friend Jazz's suggestion. And there's spots for five transistors as well. So if you're interested in that, all kinds of PCB stuff. And here's the other one that I was talking about soldering together later that features in the corner of my original unboxing video off on the right there. This is designed by Gustavo Renaga for a conference back in 2017. And uh, there's lots of cool info about it, but it's an ESP8266 badge and takes some LEDs. It's very cool. So let's jump in. I'm eager to get this up and running for the first time. Um, it comes with a power adapter and a USB-C cable, uh, which is nice and flexy silicone, I think, coated. But um, the other thing is that, pardon me, uh, it's a, let me show you the adapter here. Boom. So this is a five, five volt, three amp, uh, travel charger that it came with and oh interesting it can output 5 9 or 12 volts so it might actually need 12 volts let me double check this actually because that changes some things mm -mm -mm -mm. do we have the manual here oh, it's a chinese side uh german here we go <laughs> Okay, it's not saying. Um, you can update the firmware, which is really cool. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use their provided adapter. I was gonna use a, a Raspberry Pi one because it's already plugged in at my workstation. But uh, if it's actually 12 volts, which their soldering iron is, and this probably is as well, then I'm going to use the actual adapter they provided. So it actually, it's a nice like beefy adapter. It comes with this nice flexi silicone coated cable, uh, USB-C to USB-C. And I'm just going to plug that in right now. We may have to move some stuff around. Well, that was a bit of a shuffle, but I'm glad that we caught it in time. This is why this is our, uh, our first time with this. Okay, so... This is a little bit short now, but we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Obviously, it's got another little like silicone covering on it. There's another thing that I discovered when uh, I was setting this up and I dropped it on the ground, which is that this comes out. Boop, look like that. Look at that. You can like replace this. You could clean the contacts if you need to. Uh, very cool. And that's a little LED that shines through, and you'll see sometimes in, in images of this thing. And when I turn it on, come on. It is a little bit of a pain to, like, seat back in that socket, though. Here we go. Awesome. Now I'm going to put together this uh, plunger situation. Pop this off. Put the rubber tip onto the plunger. Make sure that that's well seated. Stick that into the back, and this rubber part goes into this uh, cap here, end cap that holds the solder paste in. And you just push that in, and then you uh, pull it back a little bit. So push the plunger into the syringe until the rubber tip inserts fully into the back of the white stopper. Pull back 
gently to relief, relieve pressure. So that's not in there fully yet. I'm a little nervous about doing this. Ah! Go in there fully! Okay, cool. And then I'm pulling back slightly to relieve the pressure. And that's says saying, like, don't pull back too much. Because the white stopper could come out completely. You can already see that, like, when I pull it back, it's sort of disengaging from the solder paste in the tube there, so... And then we take this off. My guess is it's probably going to spurt out a little bit because we just put a bunch of pressure on it. Um, but I'm going to get ready with this dispenser needle, which is the type that I like. Oh, and the satisfying part. Ooh, look at that. So nice. Cool. Here we go. Oh, it's not spurting out. That's nice. Cool. And when I'm done with this, I'm going to put this in the fridge because it helps it uh, stay good over time. So now we're pretty much set up. We've got our solder paste. We need to plug this in. We've got our components and things. I'm going to uh, grab this and open it. I like to use the tweezers to open the uh, little SMD tape and reel things. Here we go. And there's another thing that I need to do with this right angle switch. One second. Let's get this apart. Come on. Here's our LED. Um, the right angle switch comes with a little, couple of little nubbins on the bottom. This seems to always happen, and I also have never seen a footprint for them that actually incorporates those on the PCB. So I'm going to clip those off with my sharp little clippers so that it'll actually sit down on the board because otherwise it'll sort of stay lifted up. And let's open up this resistor. Again, the project link for this is in the description to the video. Ah, there we go. Um, I'm really excited, actually. In a little while, Ahmed Oyenuga, who is someone that I interviewed recently on Hackster Cafe, is planning to send over a, uh, a PCB assembly uh, aid, motorized aid, called the pick and place wheel, which helps you uh, store and find, when you need to, all your SMD components, which is very exciting. So here we go. We've got the battery holder, we've got the switch, we've got the LED, and we've got the resistor, we've got things clipped off of there. Uh, and now we just have to try and make sure that our um, cable here is going to be long enough. So I may actually scoot this down a bit. Just so we're a little closer here. Let's see. Can we go any further? I really want to not put strain on this cable because obviously you don't want it to come off the desk. I think it's got enough heft that'll stay in place. Let's see. Yep. Oh, and it comes on. Oh, look at that. Heating, it says. There's a little tool setting. Hmm. This is so cool! It's such a cute little thing! Okay, and I'm gonna move these things up so that it, uh... Yes. And this is this is where they're gonna go on top of here. Oh, I shouldn't touch that, obviously. <laughs> um, so actually, what I should do first is, um, I'm gonna set that aside, and I'm going to put the solder paste on here. Uh, I'm just gonna use this dispenser. And I could use a stencil if I had one. I don't have a stencil for these. Oshui does come with a stencil. Check this out. So it's like a an octopus badge. And there's two different stencils from Osh stencils that allow you to apply solder paste to the board in the right patterns. There's one for each side of the board. And there's also a squeegee that comes with it which is really just sort of a credit card size thing, which you use to push the solder paste through the holes, like scrape it over the stencil and scrape the solder paste through the holes. So we're not going to be doing that right now, but I think we're going to be as assembling the Oshui later on in a different video. Okay, so onto this, I'm going to start dispensing this solder paste onto here. It's got to fill up this little nozzle first. Do, 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 do. 
do, 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 do. Pardon me, I probably won't be very precise because I don't do this a lot. Like I mentioned, um, you know, this is my first time using the Adafruit uh, supplied miniware, mini hot plate preheater, and um, because of that, whoop, I don't have a ton of experience with this. I have used a desktop hot plate, just like a you know a standard kitchen hot plate before for this kind of thing, and that's what you'll see if you look up the old Oshui video. But yeah, this is my first time in a long time because that that desktop hot plate is very unwieldy. It's annoying to set up and it takes up a lot of space, which is why I haven't done a lot of surface mount stuff with a hot plate in the past. Um, so that's my goal with this little little one is to uh, get this working. Now those two should not be connected. They are bridged. Um, usually what will happen, that might be too much solder. <laughs> solder paste. Um, usually what will happen when you do this is that uh, the solder paste will shrink onto the solder pads, so you don't have to be incredibly precise with it. But I'm just going to separate these two just, just because with my tweezers here. I'm going to wipe that off. <laughs> okay, and we'll try and like... So it should just suck itself on back onto the solder pads. Um, the exposed pads once we are heating it up. Uh, so now we're going to place these components. We just put them in place with the tweezers. It's interesting doing this with like a camera in my face between me and the object. Here we go. Our little resistor goes over here. Think. Our LED, I always have to remember which way up this goes. In fact, I'm gonna be right back just so that I don't put this on the wrong way for the first time. No, you know what? I think the mark is on the ground side. And which side is that? Let's see. Oh wait, no, the green. So this is power, doo -doo -doo, power. I should label this better. <laughs> I think it goes this way because the green markings on the top should be on the ground side. That's sort of standard. But I remember getting this wrong before at some point with this. So now I'm like, ah, second guessing myself. This'll be nice. If this works with the um, battery holder, that's a lot easier than like soldering those by hand. Cause you gotta kind of like hold the soldering iron in place on it for a long time to get it to stay down. Okay, so that's everything placed on the board. Let's see what happens when we try to actually heat it up. What do you say now? You don't say anything. It doesn't feel too warm. I'm gonna... That doesn't really feel warm at all. Let's see what happens. Do I have to engage it by pushing a button? Button B and button A. Oh, here we go. May generate a light smoke and steam, etc. Do not remove or replace the hot place while it's on. I would hope not. Cool. Alright, so connect it with power supply. We'll enter, enter standby mode. Short press button A to start heating. Default heating to M1 preset temperature. Okay, this is very similar to how it works with their soldering iron as well. So it just gave me a little beep, and now it is going to start heating again. If it's anything like their soldering iron, it'll be really fast, which is nice. So like preset temperature, you can short press button A to choose one of the preset temperatures. You can adjust it by long pressing button A to enter adjustment mode. Decrease or increase current preset temperature by pressing the two buttons. And then you can go back to standby mode in, uh, by long pressing button B. Recalculate heating time. This is interesting. 
It's not really giving me an estimate on he heating time, so I'm not sure uh, what the deal is with that. Let's have a look at the uh, comments. Oh, pardon. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can you can use a small size pizza oven. I've used a uh, a toaster oven before. Um, Oren says uh, the heating bed and the extruder for uh, the previous question was whether you could use like a heated bed on a three D printer to uh, melt these things, uh, and now it turns out that you mean an extruder. Uh, that seems challenging as well because it's not really the right shape, is it? Mm, hot plate, <laughs> mini mini hot plate is great. To heat with extruder, you'd need the heat all over the place, not concentrated in one place, like with the extruder. Exactly, yeah. Um, in fact, I was thinking about the extruder by mistake. Hmm. Cool. So, oh, Lionel says use flux. That's a good point. You know what? It, as I mentioned, it's been a long time since I did this. I have got some flux here, so I should have that. Uh, you know, so solder paste is made up of little beads of solder um, inside of... Uh, basically suspended in flux. And I couldn't remember if I've, I think that I've done this without flux in the past. So I'm going to try it this way. But <laughs> if if it totally screws up and I get some tombstoning or whatever, then I'll definitely come back and add flux. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, five Ash says, I have been planning to get this hot plate. Got my SMD skills at okay-ish level with the iron, like 0603 is doable, but one make my life easier. Ooh, yeah. Um, 0603 is challenging. I design all my PCBs with 1206 size uh, components because I'm not doing anything too small. And I think it makes it really easy for people, even who are beginners and don't have an SMD setup, to be able to solder it by hand. Um, 0603 is impressive. I, uh, you know, as a result, I don't have a ton of experience soldering that small, but um, there are, I think, some really small components on Oshwi here that, um, like, a couple of these chips and stuff, diodes, that could benefit from uh, a smaller, capable setup. <laughs> I hope they launch a bigger plate. There seems to be a lack of mid-sized hot plates. Interesting, yeah. I haven't seen any mid-sized hot plates, honestly. This is not really seeming to heat up at all. Did it just go dormant again? Curses. So, th oh, um, ah. So I can swap between M1, M2, and my M3, but it doesn't tell me what those actually correspond to. It is heating up very quickly. Oh, there we go. We've got a lighting indicator. Beautiful. And it's um, telling me how long it's taken to heat up. This is very cool. So it's saying 102 degrees Celsius, setting M1, 19 volts, and then uh, a little sort of animated scrolling chevrons to show that it's going up, and also a counter of seconds. So it's like at 48 seconds right now. Um, it's going up pretty fast, which is impressive. But it's still got to get up to like 200 something. And I guess we'll find out what temperature and number M1 is by where it stops. 168. Oh, here we go. M1 is 220, M2 250, and M3 300. I wasn't misreading in the chart. Beautiful. Yeah, it's probably here in the manual, honestly. Um, where did that go? Here we are. Let's take a look. Ooh, now it's red. Very exciting. Oh yeah, here we go. Perfect. <laughs> Imagine actually looking at the words in the manual. Heating area, 30 by 30 millimeters. We're at 225. Ooh, interesting. So it is on M1, but it's going up already past 220. We're at 229. It seems to be holding steady around 228, 229. Interesting. Uh, temperature range is 100 to 350 Celsius, and the max one is 300. Um, very cool. Different light colors. Good stuff. All right, let's see what happens now. I'm gonna put this on here and, oh, you know what? I'm gonna try it first and set up my camera so that we can get a nice close-up view because I want us to be able to like see this in all the glorious detail. 
So if you don't mind, it's going to take me just a second here. And I'm going to focus closer. So I'm going to put my hand up here. Yes. And we're going to push it down closer to the thing and try not to melt my camera. How about that? I just, I really want you to be able to see all the beautiful details that we get when we're, um, when this starts melting. So I'm going to put this here as a reference for focus. And we're going to go a little bit closer in, a little bit closer. How's that? That's pretty nice. Maybe back off a little bit. Yes. Okay. Let's see if we can get a nice shot of this melting. So it's at 218 Celsius right now, it says. And we should start to see these come together and liquefy. Oh, it is. It's melting a little bit. You can see that like the flux is kind of spreading out a lot, actually. I put too much on. I definitely put on too much solder. It's smoking a little bit, which is uh, to be expected. They mentioned specifically when you like first use it. Interesting. So this actually does not seem to be melting super great. It might take a minute. I'm going to give it a minute longer. And if it doesn't go into place, you should see the uh, solder paste kind of contract. It should get really shiny and it should contract onto the contacts that you have there. I'm not seeing that yet. It could be an experience thing for me, but if we continue to not see that, I, I am going to add flux. Are you going to get hot enough? It's holding steady at 220 Celsius. It does have to heat all the way through the PCB. But I might shift it up to temperature M2 just for fun. Come on. Yeah, I'm going to do 250. So it's slowly climbing now. Um, so sometimes you will have the hot plate hold at a temperature that is below the melting point of the solder. Uh, oh, look at it, it's going! Oh, look at it! There we are! So that's start. it's about 243 now, so it probably started around 240. Oh, that's so cool! Oh, so exciting! Do you see that? Okay, I'm gonna nudge this so that it doesn't bridge that contact. Oh my gosh! Beautiful! So the stuff on this side of the board has gone. Um, you can see that that's all shiny now. And this is still kind of a paste. So I'm going to like shift it around to try and... I kind of wonder if there's any hot spots on here. Uh-oh. Nope. Don't come off. Stay there. I was just trying to seat it better. Um, perfect. Beautiful. Uh, I'm very excited about what's happened up here. Remember, I was a little afraid about that bridging. And it has not bridged. It is beautiful. I'll check that later when I turn it on. Come on. I just need it to heat this last. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. <laughs> ah, okay, um, let's see. Which way are you oriented? Let's stick that on this way. <laughs> that was totally my fault. Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to grab another tweezer. Or this guy, actually. Hold this down in place and try to swing this around. Oh boy. Oh, that's totally on me. Okay. <laughs> We're going to give that a second to reheat. <laughs> so that's a thing to be aware of. Um, it is a small surface. You can easily knock the thing off. And that's not optimal. That is not the desired behavior. But that is 100% user error. Okay. <laughs> Fortunately, this part stayed on. That's good. That's like the roughest one to redo. All the rest of this stuff I can very easily redo by hand. I can redo, you know, I've been soldering these by hand so far and that's fine, but 
It would be nice to not have to resolder that. Okay, let's put you back on place. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. Stop sticking. Stop. That's probably because I put that, uh, I used these tweezers to move the solder paste around. No, stop. To unbridge those contacts, remember? I should have wiped them off better so it wouldn't stick. Okay, now go. Go there. And stay there. Okay. Ah! Drills and spills. I'm glad I didn't start with Oshwe. <laughs> Let's just say that. But this does give me information about, like, when I'm soldering a larger PCB. I have to make sure that, um, you know, I'm able to support the whole PCB and that I'm not going to end up with it, like, falling off and spewing components everywhere. Because that is not optimal. Go. Go in place. Ah! There we go. Okay, cool. That's hooked back onto place. That's great. That's back in place. And I think that there's still plenty of solder on there to uh, continue making these connections. I'm just going to make sure that this battery is in the right place and is all nice and connected. And I'm going to be a little bit more careful with the tweezers. <laughs> okay, let's see what the, comp uh, the comments are. <laughs> Oh yes, that's good. Uh, <laughs> engineers and makers don't read manuals until they run into a problem. It's true, it shouldn't be true, but it, it kinda is true. You know, the last time I was doing, um, when I did the unboxing for this, someone actually commented like, what, I thought this was Hackster, we don't read manuals. And I'm like, you absolutely do read manuals. Haven't you heard of like RTFM? Anyway, manuals are great. You should absolutely read them. Ideally before you have problems. <laughs> don't burn your flesh, yeah. Pick off the parts before they are short circuited. I mean, there's no power going into here, so that's um, obviously okay right now. Um, <laughs> don't melt IC at 250. In this case, there isn't actually an IC on here, so part of the reason people use, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, sometimes you'll have the hot plate at a lower temperature below melting, and then you'll use hot air on top to apply selective heat in uh, just the places that you're focusing on. And that allows you to solder an entire large board um, without continually applying a lot of heat to the ICs. In this case, there's no chips on here. So it's actually okay. Um, I think it should be fine. Okay, that's actually melted on now, that's good. And what about you? You might need a little bit more. Um, yeah, so, in this case, there's no chips on the board. There's only you know, a diode, uh, a resistor, a switch, and a battery holder. So that's why I'm fine with um, allowing this whole thing to, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Let's add a little more. Oh yeah, that's so satisfying. Okay, let's do it on the other side as well because I think this battery holder is gonna need some extra solder, both for um, electrical contact and for um, mechanical purposes because it's got to hold the battery holder onto there. Wow. You're probably not supposed to do it this way, so don't emulate me, but um, it is very satisfying. And yeah, there does seem to be a bit of a, you know, it's not as hot near the edges, which makes sense. Look at that. Okay, gorgeous. I'm going to turn this off now. Um, I'm going to see what the actual recommended procedure is again. Back to standby mode. Long press button B to quit heating. Okay, cool. Ha! And on the screen, it says setting. Heating? No, you shouldn't be heating anymore. I'm just going to unplug you. Sorry. Oh, no. Hmm. Well, I don't want to jostle everything. So I'm unplugging at the source, but later on I'll go and test the, uh, I'll go back and test the on-off functions of this. <laughs> it is so cool to see it work. Wash hands. Yes, absolutely. Uh, after I'm done with this, I will wash my hands very well because I don't want to eat solder paste. 
when I next have lunch. What's cooking? It is a PCB I designed for Avenet's Centennial last year, the Guitar Pick PCB, um, which you can find linked in the description below. You can use it as an earring. You can use it as a, um, you can read the whole story about it actually. Avnet used to use, to own a company called Guild Guitars, and uh, they have this whole video about how Jimi Hendrix played one and stuff. <laughs> um, but you can read more about it here. It could be used as a keychain or whatever. So it's the Avnet logo with like as a guitar headstock. Um, in the tutorial, all these PCBs have not been ground down, so the edges are really rough. But uh, later on, I went back and dremeled them down, so those mouse bites are no longer sticking out. What else have we got here? The PCB whisper. <laughs> Go into place, girl. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, this technique seems way better than using a soldering iron, no? Yeah, I mean, it obviously depends on what you're doing. So in this case, uh, you know, if you're if you're doing a bunch of them, uh, I think it can really help, um, or it can save some time. With little fiddly components like this switch, it was definitely a lot easier to do that with uh, solder paste. And I might actually just like that might be my preferred thing now. Also, when you're doing it by hand, um, what helps is to add a bunch of flux on, as we were talking about, but that kind of can create this gross, you know, gunky, sticky look. You can see a little bit on the corner here, um, something similar, but it overall, it looks way cleaner. Let me show you one that I did by hand. Okay, I'm gonna go grab that. So here's uh, a similar one that I did by hand. You can see that I turned it into an earring. And uh, there's, you know, this one's actually pretty clean. But up here, you can see that there's all this kind of gunky stuff around the switch. And that's all that flux that, um, you know, you can wipe it off to a certain extent. You can use isopropyl alcohol and like a lint-free wipe, like a piece of cloth or something. Uh, to try and get that off, but it really, you know, usually often it just sort of smears around and you end up with this kind of messy, gunky look, which is not, you know, it doesn't actually affect how it works, <laughs> but for something like this that's supposed to be aesthetic or a piece of jewelry, I think it does make a difference and it kind of drove me crazy. So this is a much nicer result in my opinion. Um, this can also usually work as a lapel pen, but you can see how this didn't really work. I was mounting the lapel pin to here, and that puts all the weight uh, in a really weirdly distributed way, so it wants to flip upside down. So my new uh, improved version that I just added to the tutorial has the button uh, or the coin cell mounted further up, and then the LED is down at the bottom. So uh, yeah, that's that's the difference between hand soldering and uh, solder paste. It does depend on what you're doing, you know. Uh, obviously for surface mount it's a lot easier in some ways uh for through hole components not so much oh i accidentally dremeled down the switch on this one but you can see how it goes um and is this cool yet i'm not going to touch it i'm just using the back of my hand to kind of feel the air near it uh it's definitely cool enough that it's not going to melt if i like pull it off of here so how about that we're going to let that cool this is a silicone baking mat that i actually use on my desk it's great for uh underneath soldering projects that you're doing because it's going to protect the desk and it looks cool. <laughs> but that's why I can put this directly on the desk and not worry about it. Um, yeah, so this is the PCB. Um, you can see it's a lot gunkier. There are reasons you might want to use a soldering iron. You can use a soldering iron for rework, for example, um, or if, like we mentioned before, there's ICs on here, if there were a chip and I wanted to uh, protect that chip, you can either heat it from the bottom but not to melting temperature, and then use a hot air gun to sort of melt individual places selectively on the board um, so that you don't focus too much heat on the, uh, the chip, the IC itself. But for something like this, it doesn't really matter. There's trade-offs. Looks even better to get the paste on after heating. It does look really nice, doesn't it? It looks so nice. Um, oh, thank you, Tariq, uh, a really cool person who is also on Hackster and comments a lot of videos. Is your battery holder back area? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, battery holder back area. So this is a CR1225. Oh, 
I probably should have been more careful with that, but it is actually cool enough to hold now. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by back area. Let's give it a shot though. Did I put this LED on the right way around? Oh no, I don't think I did because they have reverse polarities of the diode. <laughs> I always get confused. Okay, so on these LEDs, there's like a stripe pointing one way on the back and then there's green markings on the other end on the front. So I can never, you know, usually oh, I put this on backwards. Maybe that's what you meant. Um, but that's fine. It doesn't really matter. It's uh, it's the same. The pads are both power. It'll get power either way. But the problem here is that I put the diode on backwards. Dang! Okay, so we're going to heat this up again. <laughs> uh, which is good practice. And this time I'm going to write down which way that LED goes, because that's been a curse multiple times. Okay. 105 Celsius, 106, 107. Cool, that's heating up. I'm going to put it on M2 heat again. And we're going to reheat this and swap around that LED to go the right way. Oh, curses. I have taken the battery out. It's very important. Um, this is the old one. This is the new one. You know, there's about similar levels of flux on here, actually. Um... So here, this is the hand-soldered one, and you can see that it's kind of gunky around here. But here, there's actually some brown flux that's gotten tossed off over here and stuff. So I wonder if there's a way that I can program in a different temperature setting that's more like 240 or something um, to keep that from splashing everywhere. I think it would also make a difference if I weren't hand-applying more solder paste while it's already hot. I think that that makes it like sort of splurt around. And if I just had it all placed in the first place, then that wouldn't be so bad. Would be neater with a hot air or regular iron. Yeah, that's the thing we've just been talking about. Um... <laughs> ah! <laughs> Come back. It can be neater in some ways. It can be less neat in some... Oh my gosh. Welcome to Saturday. So, uh, I'm just going to flip around this diode really quick. And I'm going to use this to hold it in place while I do that. Let's wait for it to melt. So we're nearly done here. I consider this a very successful first test because it's sort of gotten me acquainted with the heater. It's very exciting. Let's take a look at more stuff on the internet. So, um... As I mentioned, another one that I want to do is Oshwi, the Octopus Badge by Gustavo Reynaga. You can find that on um, GitHub, which is linked in the description below. I'm not going to do that today because I think that um, I need to do a little bit more practice with small boards first and get used to even just the process of handling these things. Uh, you saw that I accidentally knocked the board off of the heater before, and that's not optimal. I need to get used to uh, this, especially before I do like a larger board. Um, and maybe come up with some strategy, strategies around that. Oshpark is wonderful. I get a bunch of my um, PCBs done by them. You can see that in the preview, this is sort of a purple and gold board. Um, and in the actual one, it is black. That's because they have this beautiful after dark colorway, which is a black PCB substrate base. Um, I'm just going to flip this around and clear solder mask over it so that you can see the copper traces underneath the solder mask. And you can also see that the exposed pads are, let's put a little bit more on here. The exposed pads are gold color and that is because they put that gold enig coating on top. So it's a very beautiful colorway with like white. Oh dear, that was a lot. <laughs> I've also got to like practice how much paste to put on here. But you can see it's making some nice shiny domes. Go on there. Go on. Yes, beautiful. I kind of want it to break the surface tension and go on the top of the bo of the LED. But it doesn't really want to. I put too much on. That's fine. 
can see it a little better maybe if I shield it a bit. Um, you can see that it's kind of like, ah, squishy. <laughs> it's really fun to play with. But okay, I'm going to turn this off now if I can. Go off. Long press. Setting. Heating. Stop heating! Stop! That's button B, right? That is button B. In heating mode, long press button B to quit heating. Maybe if I do it twice? No, it still says heating. Ah! Okay, well, I'm going to... No, I'm not going to unplug that. It's going to jostle it, and that's bad. I'm going to unplug it at the source. And then I'll probably look up some... Ooh, that's not good. There we go. Let's look it up. Uh, I'll stop MHP30. Wait, no, I'll turn it off. I know it. <laughs> Somebody's got a cool review of it. Maybe this will see. Turn off. So. Oh. Seed Studio has great um, documentation a lot of the time. Oh, yeah, there we go. They also have it out of stock. Man, this thing is really popular right now, I guess. I'll look this up later. Oh, they have a cool exploded view of it. Look at that. Ceramic coating. Brass heating body. Heating coil. Futuristic design, stainless steel bracket. Yeah, and it's got that status LED, which is really cool. That shows you if it's like heating or um, done heating or whatever. What's the difference between solder paste and traditional solder? So traditional solder is, is this flux core? Oh, huh. like I said, I still got to practice like being aware of this thing. Um, but yeah, so this actually has a, a cleaning thing stuck on the top of it. That's still hot. Let's get it over there. Um, but traditional solder, is this, does this have a ros rosin core? It might, it might not. Um, most solder is either a solid alloy. Of, it could be like tin and copper and things like that. Uh, and lead, maybe. Um, or lead-free is more like just tin and copper. Uh, and it may have a rosin core, so it could have flux sort of in the middle of the wire, uh, surrounded by the metal alloy. And then when you melt it, the flux and solder melt together, or just the solder melts, and it goes onto your surface. Uh, the way that solder paste is structured is that it's actually flux with a bunch of tiny uh, balls of solder alloy, that tin, copper, possibly lead um, alloy suspended in the flux. So it's just like little tiny balls of uh, solder alloy sup suspended in like a flux paste. Uh, so it's almost the opposite, whereas a lot of solder, rosin core solder specifically, has like an outer uh, shell of alloy in a wire shape filled with flux. In this case, it's like little tiny balls of solder alloy suspended in flux. And I think that's really cool. That's why you, oh, let's see, who was it? Um, I'm going to try and find whose channel it was. I think, was it Carl Bourget? Mm -hmm. There was someone I interviewed pretty recently. Extra Cafe, let's find out who it was. And I know this will jog my memory. These are a bunch of people that I've interviewed recently. It wasn't Ben Kresna, was it, Dar was it Darian Johnson? Who was it? Somebody has these just like incredibly gorgeous, it might've been Greg Devil. Yes, it was Greg Devil. Okay, so let's look at his Instagram. He has some really beautiful close-up views of solder melting. Okay, yeah, let's just go on a little journey while my PCB cools down and then we'll test it again. Um, there's got to be a video around here somewhere. He just has this gorgeous macro photography. Ah, look at that! This crisp silk screen from Osh Park. I know that he has some like beautiful videos of solder paste melting close up. He also has some really cool 
barge wires. Here we go. This is the one I was thinking of. Look at that. Uh, you can see the tiny balls of solder alloy uh, suspended in the flux there. It's so cool. And that's what, why it looks kind of gray and matte when it's just stenciled onto the board. You can tell this is stenciled on because it's really clean and crisp. Um, and in very like specific deposited areas. And uh, then when it gets heated up, all those little balls melt together and it gets to be one shiny mass. It's so cool. Um, let's see what other ones of his we can find that sort of show this. What's going on here? Billboarding defect with small 0201 parts. Why aren't you loading? Billboarding. There we go. Ah, interesting. So uh, there's one error, error that you can get when you are doing solder paste. Um, usually in an oven or on a hot plate when you just leave it alone and you're not messing with it like I was. <laughs> um, this one is called billboarding. It's like you have the component that's supposed to lay flat and it flips up on its side. Uh, you can see that that, oh, sorry, that purpley one here whoop, has done that. Um, there's another one that can happen called tombstoning, which is when it flips up on an end like that. And both of those, obviously, this one seems like it would have contact still, but not work very well. Uh, in tombstoning, you completely lose contact with one of the pads, so you will have an error that way. And with really small components, it can be a lot harder to tell. Another good reason to use uh, 12 or 6 parts unless you really need to do... Uh, oh, here we go, some tombstoning. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, not great. Um, so it helps to you know, do a good visual check. He has some really cool boards. I think this is the orange crab. Yeah. Ah, check it out. He did this on um, Hexter Launch with Group Gets. And I just want to see if he has a nice close-up video of it melting, because that's just really the satisfying part. Gorgeous, isn't it? Show us the video, Greg. <laughs> you can also go onto his Instagram um, and just check it out yourself. Lots of pretty things. Oh, is this? No, this is still just a photo. Show me the videos. You can do it yourself. Let's go test this PCB that we've just soldered. Oh, here's a BGA one. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, back to reality. <laughs> Thanks for asking that, because we went down a whole wonderful little side road there. Uh, he stacked those solder balls on one by one. So clean put on the PCB. Uh, yeah, you know, did he do that? Because uh, sometimes the chips come with that already on uh, BGA chips, but uh, sometimes they don't. I would totally believe that he did it because he's an amazing uh, engineer, but yeah, just, okay. So let, let's test this one that I've just assembled. Put that away. So here's our board. Here is our CR1225 battery. I could have flipped this around, but again, it really doesn't matter which way the battery is oriented. In this case, like it can come out to the side either way. Uh, there's nothing blocking it. And uh, both these positive contacts are the same. The central ground contact is the same. It doesn't matter. Hey, there we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> so there is our completed. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what's causing that. I wonder if there's like a short somewhere. It does seem to be related to the, the switch. Is it the switch? Hmm. I don't really see. It might have just been my finger bridging that somehow. Hmm. <laughs> well, it seems okay now. But uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll do some more troubleshooting on that. So this was a really cool first run. I think that this is a wonderful little hot plate. It's going to be really helpful for me. Oh, I see. Maybe it's a defect in the switch itself. More experimentation is required. But yeah, there we go. It works. The PCB works. The mini hot plate works. It's a gorgeous little piece of machinery. It has lots of cool feedback. I just need to learn how to turn it off. <laughs> and I promise that I will update everyone when I do. Be that out. 
there's a YT here called a YouTuber called The Coder that has hand reballed a PS4 APU. Mad skills. Dang! You know, I tried reballing a BGA once and it was such a challenge. Um, I guess, you know, the real problem was that, uh, you know, I was doing it with a microscope and tweezers. Um, for reference, a BGA is this type of thing where you have a chip with a bunch of um, it's called a ball grid array chip. So on the bottom, there's a bunch of contacts where that you, you'll place little solder balls individually, individually picking up little tiny solder balls and uh, placing them on the contacts. And uh, I did this once with a microscope and you kind of need that because you can see this is really tiny. Um, but then I was trying to do it with hot air and then once I applied the hot air, they all blew off again. It was so tragic. Um, so using doing this on a hot plate, I think, would actually be a lot better. But yeah, even so, placing those little balls by hand is so challenging. Oh, I was having some issues with this switch working. And Adam says, it's a switch. There seems to be a real bad batch of them going around, or they're just a poor design. Too bad. So that's, we're just going to wrap up here really quick but get out of the way thank you yeah it it goes on well sometimes but then sometimes there's a little flicker well now it's working maybe it just needed to be like primed a few times cool success thank you for joining me on this little adventure i'm very excited to have this uh this little hot plate up and running <gasps> and uh we'll see I've ordered some new PCBs, like I told you. New versions of old PCBs, new versions of this. Avnet 100 PIC PCB, and also my companion core board with the rib cage on it. I'm very excited about that. Uh, that's not going to be a surface mount board, but there'll be lots more PCB content coming your way, so stay tuned. Uh, thanks for joining me. Have an excellent weekend, and hack on.